Sorry for the mini hiatus, everyone. I've been having quite the financial problems these last few weeks. And surprisingly, they're not my fault. <laughs> what a concept. But for the most part, they've been resolved. Welcome to Get Busy Watching. I'm your host, Honest Dan, and I'm back, baby. Before I tackle the highly anticipated sequel, I'm going to quickly go over my feelings for the original flick. Twenty thirteen's Frozen was good. Yeah, I liked it enough. I, I certainly didn't love it like everyone else seemed to. And following the typhoon of overplayed Let It Go, that certainly left a bad taste in my mouth, but I thought the movie itself was quite solid. It had some nice, empathetic characters in Anna and Elsa, some gorgeous animation, probably the best that Disney's put out in the 3D animation transition. The music as a whole was pretty nice, and a fairly subversive message for Disney in the form of true love being from family rather than a romantic interest. Imagine that! Women don't have to suck face with a dude by the end of the story! My major gripes with the film come from three sources. The first, the fairy tale setup. Why was it necessary to lock up Elsa in her room for years? Why was it necessary to wipe Anna's memory? This feels like an overreaction to Elsa accidentally blasting Anna. And seriously, in the X amount of time that these sisters have been separated, how in blazes have they been so... separated? I'm assuming that Elsa doesn't have a kitchen in her room, or her own private stock of food, and I'm gonna take another wild assumption here and say that there's no bathroom in there. Unless she's been going over the balcony. I don't want to think about that. Also, the famous Hans twist. Yes, please pad out this already suitable runtime with a surprise twist and make it feel 15 minutes longer. I hope Sub-Zero rips someone's spine out because that was completely unnecessary. And of course, I hate Olaf. For many years, I actually hated Josh Gad too for being a not funny, man. Actually, 2017 alone turned me around on the guy, but Olaf is awful comic relief. He's awful. He's not funny. He is the bane of Frozen's existence, in that he basically got a whole short dedicated to him that lasted 20 minutes before Coco was enough to drive me absolutely insane. I don't even mind a Frozen short. I like Frozen enough to see more content, but not Olaf! Anyway, Frozen's a good movie. Not great in my opinion, but good. Now, onward to the sequel. Has Elsa seemed weird to you? She seems like Elsa. There's this voice. Voice? What does that mean? The kingdom is not safe. Find who is calling to you. They may have answers. Where are we? How did you get in the forest? The mist parted for us. Impossible. Elsa, get out of there! You can't just follow me into fire. Then don't run into fire. Second verse, same as the first. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. More or less, just as good as the first one. In some ways, it's an improvement, but not by much. <laughs> Similar to uh, the first movie, we open on Anna and Elsa as kids. Man, those kids are cute. Especially, especially Anna. Like, what a little dork. I have no idea where she gets that from. I love that woman. Anyway, this is actually one of the first major improvements, uh, the setup. There's nothing wrong with it. At the very least, it doesn't make me question the film's intelligence. It's pretty straightforward. Like, you know there's something not quite right about it, but that just feeds into the overarching mystery of, of, of Elsa's quest uh, into the Enchanted Forest. And it, it's, it's pretty good. 
at the very least, like I said, it just doesn't actively frustrate me. Fast forward to the present, and now we get our first major red flag of the story. Kristoff wants to propose to Anna, but he can't seem to. He is constantly tripping over his words and saying the wrong thing, basically. Have you seen Rescuers Down Under? No? Well then do yourself a bloody favor and go see it. It is criminally underrated and is one of my personal all-time favorite Disney films, period. But if you have seen it, yeah, Kristoff is basically doing that thing that Bernard was doing with Bianca. Except Bernard and Bianca were an adorable pairing, and Bernard is a far more engaging character than Kristoff. Kristoff is annoying and dumb. Except Kristen Bell. Kristen Bell is a treasure. I love Kristen Bell. And I can't wait for the final season of The Good Place. Watch The Good Place if you haven't seen it. Jeez, I feel like I'm recommending a whole lot of properties that aren't this one. And I'm just going to get this out of the way. No. Olaf has not improved. He is as obnoxious as he was in the first movie. Moving on. I do admit that the story is, for the most part, pretty engaging. Like, I am wondering, what is this voice that only Elsa can hear? What, where is this building up to? I'm always asking that question, and I'm always interested in seeing how we get there. The... The adventure, the quest that the, that the crew goes on does have its harrowing moments. I won't give everything away here. Um, definitely my personal favorite improvement over the original is the relationship between Elsa and Anna. They actually feel like sisters in this movie. Because <laughs> you'll recall, in the first movie, they, they really didn't have a lot of screen time together. And even when they did, it was more awkward than anything. In this movie, though... It's really good. They, they don't always get along. They, they don't always see eye to eye, but they do comfort each other. They do. They are protective of each other. In my opinion, this is ultimately the greatest improvement over the original. The music is good. I mean, nothing really stands out or is especially amazing or memorable. I mean, I guess I can probably guess which songs are going to have the most commercial success into the unknown. Uh, show yourself. Personally, my favorite song in the entire movie is the insanely powerful The Next Right Thing. Because you can take that song with you wherever you go because it tackles like really hard themes like grief and even depression. It's a heart-wrenching song, but it's beautifully inspiring and beautifully sung, especially if you know Kristen Bell and bits and pieces of her personal life, as she's been pretty open about her own struggles with mental health. I mean, I present this very cheery, bubbly person, yeah. but I also do a lot of work. I do a lot of introspective work, and I check in with myself when I need to exercise, and, and I you know, got on a prescription when I was really young to help with my anxiety and depression, and I still take it today, and I have no shame in that. Making this a very personal song for her, I imagine. Or maybe it's because I myself am dealing with my own issues, so I relate to the song more than any other that's been presented in the story. Either way, at least it's not lost in the woods. Okay, to be honest, it's not like that song is is bad per se. Like if you just if you divorced it from the film and just popped it into your music player or on the radio, it, it's fine enough to bounce to. But the visuals. Just... Movie. If you're gonna have Sven sing this song, yes. Sven the reindeer sings parts of this song. If you're gonna have that happen. Expect only this reaction from me. <laughs> 
just know. And last but not least, this little guy. He's no Pascal, but he's my favorite animal sidekick since Tangled. All right, guys, going to tackle spoilers now. So if you don't want those, jump to this time code. Heads up, Disney. The moment that Elsa was revealed to be the fifth element, I kind of saw that coming from a mile away. The moment that these North Ultra people introduced that there was a fifth element, and in, yes, I know, it's the fifth spirit, not the fifth element. But you know what? Elsa is stealing Lilu's thunder. If I have to accept anyone as a fifth anything, it would be Lilu as the fifth element, not Elsa as the fifth spirit. But I have to accept that now, don't I? But if I have to, I'm going to accept it the way that I want to. So Elsa is the fifth element. Anyway, yeah, I, I saw that twist coming from a mile away. You were not being subtle. And also, no one thought that Elsa and Olaf were killed. Disney, we know you don't have the spine to kill off two of your most bankable characters. Overall, yeah, I still like it. Some parts are pretty cringy, like an ice stalagmite shoved up my butt. But when the movie is trying to be good, it is actually pretty darn good. I'd say if you didn't enjoy the first movie, maybe this won't change your mind. But you could always puff off and go watch the Lion King remake. Come on, guys. Give, give animated Disney a fair shot, not live-action remake disney that, that doesn't deserve your time or or money animated disney does they're not creatively bankrupt they're not perfect all the time but they're not they're not cash-ins my honest rating for frozen 2 a four out of five thanks so much for watching you guys i really appreciate it have a great day hope to see you soon